So in today's video, five steps for incredibly moody photos. It's so rainy. So each time I make these five steps video, the first step is first and foremost to figure out what it is you want to photograph. In this particular case, I have come out to this beach area. We have this wooden bridge pier something here, which is going to be my main subject. The entire concept of the photo, that's what I'm trying to emphasize in the first step. Like what are you actually taking a photo of? So I'm going to use the pier here. Very simple, very basic concept, but it's also a very strong and yeah, cliche concept, but it's cliches because they, they work. But I also have some reeds, I have some tide pools, I have some wind turbines there in the background. Not entirely sure I'm going to use those. And I have another wooden bridge a little bit further over. So the concept of the photo, wooden bridge leading into something moody. And something moody, that is of course step two. Get out on a day with moody weather. Heavy rain clouds, that is usually what I prefer. When I also go for a foggy morning, I guess that is also moody. But today, heavy rain clouds. And as you can see here behind me, yeah, blue sky. Not super interesting, not super moody. However, if I turn around, we have some really heavy clouds coming in over here. And I've been monitoring the weather forecast for the past days. It was probably better yesterday and the day before, but we're still having a little bit of this really moody weather. So get out on days with heavy rain clouds, showers, good shower forecasts. It can be windy, it can be more still weather. Actually today there's not a whole lot of wind but uh, the clouds are heavy, they are dark, they are brooming, they are full of rain. I'm going to be wet, but it's going to be so much fun. So one thing to be aware of when you're out photographing in weather like this is to make sure that it's not lightning, because you will die <laughs> if you get struck by the lightning. But the main thing is that, of course, shower clouds change all the time. They, in this case, move from over here and then move over here. So my original composition with the pier is just straight out over the water. That means I have a little time before my rain clouds are actually in position for me to shoot them. So I can come down to the beach, find other compositions and play around with those photographing in the direction of the wind turbines over here in the background until then. So that's exactly what I've done. I've come down to these tide pools here and I'm simply just using the ripples in the sand and the reflection to create my photo. That leads me in to the third step and that is to create your composition. So obviously up with the pier, I will show it in a moment. You just use the pier as a leading line leading into the scene. It's also your subject. But down here at the beach, I'm using the ripples, as you can see here, in front of the camera. I'm using my wide angle to really accentuate these ripples of sand here in the foreground. And as you can see, when I come down to the water here, you can really see how strong the reflection gets. So in this composition, I'm using the ripples to lead into the scene, into the moody clouds, and I'm using the reflection to create something with a little bit more aesthetic impact. It's just more interesting to have, yeah, a reflection. We, we are primed to love reflections because it's order. So we have this 
order and chaos theme in this photo. Ripples in front, into the scene, order and chaos in the background with the big moody clouds. And they are moody. So besides the composition tips I'm sharing in this video here, I also have a couple of ebooks on composition where I share many more tips. They're super easy to read. I have made a lot of examples in them, so you should fairly easily be able to digest what's in them. At least all the reviews says that they are doing really, really well and works really, really well. So thank you to all of you who have already gotten them and also made a five star review. It means a lot to me because this is how I make my living. So thank you so much. There are links to the ebooks down in the description. So step four is of course to get your settings right. In this case here I'm photographing with a wide angle which means that depth of field is not something I have to worry too much about. However because I'm so close to my foreground it is still something I have to take into consideration. As per usual I'm a little bit lazy. I shoot at f16. It is the closest down aperture that you can usually use without getting too much diffraction from f18, f20 or f22. And it is enough in this case here to get the entire scene in focus. I'm focusing what's called like one third ish into the scene, like which is only a few meters in front of me, even though I'm basically shooting the clouds to infinity. But it's, it's enough in this case. So you have to study all that with hyperfocal distance and, and all those things. Like I don't always just focus to infinity. In this case here, just focus one third into the scene and you ought to cover it all. So having my camera down here, I'm just focusing around here-ish. And that's enough for me to actually have the sand here also in focus and the background. In regard to the settings, as per always, I am shooting in aperture priority, ISO 100, f16 as I mentioned, and that gives me a shutter speed of 1 25th of a second. That's not a particularly interesting shutter speed. So as you can see here, the ripples on this little lake here have to stop, the wind has to die down, and then I can get the reflection. So I'm not doing any kind of long exposure or anything funky like that. I am, however, just to be sure, bracketing my photo. So the settings for bracketing is also very simple. Two stops of light in between and three exposures. That's it. Super simple. So here comes the rain and the clouds and there's actually a little bit of hail in these clouds. Come on, it's May. Can we soon have some spring? <laughs> but I'm just hurrying back to the pier to get the shot while the clouds in the background, oh, you can hardly see them, are looking like this. And I simply just repeat step two, no, step three and step four. So find my composition, which I already know due to it being the pier, and then the settings. <sighs> it's raining. So a fast tip is to use a lens hood when you're photographing in rainy weather, because the lens hood will actually take probably most of the rain droplets that come on so they don't sit on top of your lens. And then you can shoot at f16 without having raindrops in your photo. So lens hood always good to bring that. So there came the rain and as you can see fairly wet already. <laughs> so I've been focusing a lot on just like getting the photos and not filming so much but I can explain you what I have done. So you can see here I have the pier here in front of me and a great bonus is that it has become wet so it's also reflective. But I'm actually just trying to line up 
you can see the edges of the pier here with let's see if it will focus here yeah with the corners down here so i get a very very strong very graphical composition that just leads into this very wet very moody weather as you could also see settings wise not super interesting f16 iso 100 i'm still bracketing and the shutter speed is whatever it is so step one concept step two wait for the weather to be moody like now step three find your composition step four make sure to get the settings right so you have a photo which is focused all the way through the scene and you have all the information you need for step five which is editing it takes too long to show an entire editing session so i'll just show you one very powerful editing technique i use in most of my moody landscape photography editing i cover a ton of other editing techniques in a very structured and easy to follow a long manner in my photoshop for landscape photographers from beginner to advanced course the course is designed to easily break down the barrier between your raw editing in either Camera Raw or Lightroom and Photoshop and you of course get access to all the photos I use in the course to practice on. There is a link and a discount code in the description of the video. But here's the trick on how I easily and efficient burn the clouds in my photos as for them to pop even more and bring out the texture. Once your photo is open in Photoshop, create a new blank layer. Make a black gradient on that layer and have the gradient cover the clouds you want to make darker. Change the blending mode of the layer to soft light. This blending mode makes the darker parts of the clouds even darker in a natural and precise way. If the effect is a bit too strong, you can create a mask on the layer and paint out the effect where it's too strong. Alternatively, you can just lower the opacity of the entire layer. And that's how you easily and efficiently burn your shadows to create extra moody clouds. So a little bonus step or ah, it's not really a step but a tip and that is to always 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 be prepared whenever the situation occurs that just takes your photo from good to really good know your camera be aware of your surroundings and then just get the shot so what just happened was the rain clouds are coming in again a person who had been down to the beach were on the way back and while he was coming back and the rain clouds were coming in I also got the pier leading into the scene and everything just came together and uh, yeah I think that was the image of the day so uh, here you go So guys, I just want to say a fast, huge, huge thank you. I finally got my silver play button. It's a few months since I actually crossed 100,000 followers here on, on YouTube, but they were a little bit slow at actually recognizing that I was across the 100,000. But I just want to say a massive 
thank you. Also, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to leave you with a little sequence I recorded uh, on my way back home where I just had a massive <laughs> hail shower, which is very uncommon for Denmark. Like we had hail laying on the road. It's like a centimeter. So, so I want to leave you with that and uh, check out the links down in the description for the course. Use the coupon code to save a few money and uh, check out the ebooks. So uh, thank you so much and uh, see you in the next video.